guide, direct and guide, and I yield myself to you, Holy Spirit. I yield myself to you right now. Have your way, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 So today's message is titled Obedience to the Assignment. Obedience to the Assignment. Now, I have a feeling that this is going to turn into a multi part message. So just Walk with me today because if we don't get through all of it, guess what? We'll pick up where we left off on next week. Amen. But the more I began to go into this, the more I started seeing, um, I just started to begin to see more and more and more. So I don't want to try to force it all into this time frame, but we're going to start this message today. Amen. So the title of the message is Obedience to the Assignment. Now, um, on Thursday of this week, we of um this past Thursday, um let's see breathe B R E A T so T no A that was B R E A the A for aim your eyes up Thursday yes aim your eyes up Thursday um the message this message is coming from the study and the article that was done on aim your eyes up Thursday so um the notes from that full article is in the notes tab so the notes aren't directly you know, um, an outline of what I'm saying, but it is the article that was written and shared in the community for aim your eyes up Thursday. All right. Now, obedience to the assignment. I want you to understand that, um, as we look at the word assignment, not actually the meaning of the word assignment, but the assignment that God has for you or an assignment that you may be walking on, there are four elements of an assignment. Okay, four elements of an assignment. And those elements are instructions, opportunity, observation, and feedback. I'm going to say it again so you can have time to write it down. And then we have people in the chat that will put it in for you. All right. Four elements of an assignment. Instruction. Opportunity, observation, and feedback. Okay. Now we might only get to instruction and opportunity today, but just real quick, let me give you an overview of where we're heading in all of this. Okay. Um, when you have an assignment, think about it in school. That's the easiest way to look at it. If when a teacher gives you an assignment, there are instructions you have to follow. You are supposed to read the instructions, the directions before you start. OK, now the, the assignment comes with instructions and these instructions are guidelines, um, information, directions that give you uh, what you're supposed to do in the assignment. OK, instructions, opportunity. Now, the opportunity is when you get to carry out these these instructions and do the assignment. So there is going to be an opportunity for you to actually put action to what you were instructed to do. Now, observation. This is the part that I need you to catch. Observation. When you are in your assignment, someone is looking. Come on now. When you're in your assignment, someone is observing you. Woo! Someone is watching your life while you are in your assignment. All right. So we had what? Instructions. We had opportunity, um, observation. And number four, feedback. After observation has been made, it may not be just the ones who's watching, but the Lord might address you. As he observed you in the opportunity that he gave you to carry out the instructions for your assignment, the Lord might provide you some feedback. And that's not an opportunity to get upset and pull back and get mad. No, that's an opportunity to take. That's an opportunity to take note of what God has revealed. And he's going to give you a remedy and you will need to respond to that remedy based on what God revealed so that you can come out with a testimony when you pass your test. Okay. So feedback is necessary. So when the test comes behind the assignment, you will be prepared to pass that test. So that leads me into point number one for today. An assignment is the training ground for a test. 
An assignment is a training ground for a test. I'm going to say that one more time. An assignment is the training ground for a test. All right. Now, the test reveals whether or not you can adhere to the instructions for the assignment. The, the, the assignment, okay, let me say that again. The test reveals, it will uncover, it will expose whether or not you were able to adhere to the instructions for the assignment. The test will reveal, uncover, and expose whether or not who you came out of that assignment ready for the test. My goodness, come on. Now, the assignment is not the test. Or let me say it like this. The assignment is the assignment is not equal to the test. The assignment is not equal to the test. Although the elements of the assignment will prepare you for the test, um because every aspect of the assignment will appear on the test. Did you did you follow that? There are elements of the assignment that will not only prepare you for the test, but they will also appear on the test. But the assignment itself is not the test. All right. Come on. The test is going to expose whether or not you did your assignment. My God. Woo. Come on. All right. But the assignment itself is not the test. Okay, come on. I hope you guys are taking notes because we're going to be diving and digging into this. And if you don't know, <laughs> I'm going I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to give you a little clue, all right? This message series, if we can call it that, that we're going in starting today is is taking you back through the entire elements of breathe, the break free, remember scripture, Aim, edify me, aim your eyes up, thank in advance, hear my voice, enlarge my territory. So in order for you to properly breathe, you got to first break free. And if you're going to break free, you got to be able to pass your test. And in order to pass your steps, your test, you have to be equipped. And you, that equipping comes through what you learn when you follow the instructions of your assignment. Whoo, I rolled through that one. Oh my goodness. All right. But the assignment is not the test. The assignment is the training ground for the test. My goodness, help me, Holy Spirit. The assignment is the training ground for the test. That should pop up in the chat. Someone's going to put it in there. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot to send it to them. Okay. The assignment is the training ground for the test. So let's talk about the ground for a moment. Help me, Holy Spirit. Let's talk about the ground for a moment. The training ground. Mm. Now, uh, with the ground, there is seed, time, and harvest. All right. There is, <clears throat> with the ground, there is seed, time, and harvest. So, um, let's see. The ground, um, is also being trained itself. Now, this is the key thing. This is what blew my mind earlier. And, and I, I had, I kind of went way off, but let me just get here. Let me stay here. Stay, stay here, Pam. All right, let's start again. The ground, with the ground, there is seed, time, and harvest. But the ground itself is also being trained to produce seed over time so that you can experience a harvest. OK, I'm going to say that again. The ground is also being trained to produce. The ground is also being trained to produce seed over time so that you can experience and harvest. OK. All right. So it's very important. Um, it's very imperative. You, you have to understand that this is key, that we. Um, we have to train the ground of our hearts. Oh, boy. My goodness. My goodness. Come on. We have to train the ground of our heart. So not only is 
the assignment a training ground, but there's some training that has to happen in the ground of our hearts so that we can, so when the seed is sown over time, we can produce what we need in that harvest. Ooh, come on. So as we train the ground of our hearts to produce seeds of obedience, because remember, we're talking about obedience to the assignment today. Over time, we will experience a harvest in the assignment and that harvest will equip and empower you to pass the test. Oh, my goodness. Woo! We're going to have to get advantage of Anita, Anita to come up here and share her testimony that has been loading with family. It has uploaded because she went through an experience that God trained her and now she has come out equipped and empowered because she passed her test and now she has a testimony. Come on. Woo! Hallelujah. Mm. And some of y'all already heard some of that. Amen. When she preached a couple of weeks ago, but I'm going to let her tell it herself. Amen. But we will come out equipped and empowered to pass the test. All right. So now here's where we, we're coming into the meat of the, the study of today. That was just an overview. That was just preparation. That was just something for you to chew on, to meditate on, to think through as we start applying it to the passages of scripture that we're going to read today. All right. So the title of the message again is obedience to the assignment. Now, um, um, if the assignment comes with instruction, opportunity, that opportunity is something that's designed to allow you to act on what you was instructed to do. There's going to be observation and feedback. We have an instructor who is observing you in the assignment and will review or provide feedback on the assignment. Okay. I had it in my notes twice. I said that already. Let's keep going. So let's look at Genesis, 20, Genesis, Genesis chapter 24. That's where we're going at today. Genesis chapter 24. All right. <clears throat> and Genesis chapter 24. We are going to start at verse tw verse one and we're going to go down to verse 21. I tried to sum this thing up for you guys, but I said, you know, we got to read it. We got to read it. We got to read it. Because that's the word. And I want the word to do a whole lot more talking before I start summing it up. Amen. All right. Genesis chapter 24, starting at verse 1 through 21. And by the time I finish cleaning my glasses, I will hope that you are there. If you don't have a Bible, there is a notes tab. Excuse me, a Bible tab that you can use to follow along. Um, I am reading straight through. Verses 1 to 21. So uh, my team probably will not post all these scriptures in there. So just try to listen and follow along if you can, if you don't have a Bible. For those who do have a Bible, turn again to Genesis chapter 24. And I'm starting at verse 1 and it says, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord has blessed Abraham in all things. Now real quick, let me remind you. Abraham um, at this point, his wife, Sarah, has passed away, but God had given him a promise that he was going to um, give him the land of Canaan. And this is where they are residing currently in chapter 24. All right. Sarah has passed away. They're residing in Canaan and he's old and well stricken in age. And the Lord has blessed Abraham in all things. Verse two. And Abraham said, said unto his eldest servant, Eleazar of his house that ruled over all that he had put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that you will not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom we dwell. Verse four, but you shall go into my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son. And the servant said unto him, what if the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land? Should I take your son there with me? Um, should I bring your son again into the land whence you came from? And Abraham said unto him, beware that you do not bring my son to that place again. Verse seven, the Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, 
which spake unto me and swear unto me, saying, Unto thee, unto thy seed, will I give this land, Canaan. He shall send his angel. Now, let me, let me, okay, I'm going to finish the sentence and then I'll explain something. He shall send his angel before thee and you shall take a wife unto my son from thence. All right. So two things are happening in verse seven. One, he's explaining to him, hey, God already told me to leave that place. Come here. He promised this land to me, but I don't want my son to marry someone here. I want him to marry someone outside of this place. Right. But he's also reminding him the same God that told me this, the same God that promised me this is also going to go before you. So the, the after he says, I give this land, um, it picks up with the same God that told me this will send his angel before you and you shall take a wife unto my son from there, from thence, from there. OK. All right. Verse eight. And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee. Then thou shalt, shalt be clear from this my oath. I'm making it very clear, he says. Only bring not my son to that place again. Um, I like the TPT translation here. If the woman is not willing to follow you to this land, then you will be free from this my oath and blameless. And you only must never take my son back there. Amen. All right. So verse nine and the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swear to him concerning this matter. And the servant took 10 camels, verse 10, and the servant took 10 camels of the camels of his master and departed for all the goods of his master were in his hands. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. Now I want to stop for a second at verse 10. I want to point something out because I don't want to forget. Because we talked about um, as we are obedient to the assignment, the assignment will equip us to pass the test and all that. Right now, I want you to understand that he was equipped before he went into the assignment in this assignment in a completely different way. And I want to remind you that some people, some of us go into an assignment that God gives us. And because it looks challenging, we forget the equipment we had when we went into it. Eleazar. His eldest servant that has been with him this long time was also equipped and had the authority to lead on this assignment with certain things. So he took 10 camels and it says all the goods of his masters were in his hand. Woo, come on. And then he went on the assignment. All right. So I want you to keep that in mind. Because sometimes the assignment starts to kind of look a little twisted or starts to feel a little heavy. And the enemy tries to whisper and make you feel inadequate. But you come in already equipped with the the, the, the needs, uh, uh, the, the, the elements that you need to be sustained through this training ground experience. Woo. Oh, God, help me, Holy Spirit. Woo. All right. Verse 11. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city on the outside of the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. OK, um, I'm going to read that in the, the, another translation translation. Verse 11, he made the camels kneel down outside the city by the well of the water at the time of the evening when the women go out to draw water. OK, verse 12. And he said, O Lord God of my master, Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master, Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water and let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that you have appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that you have shown kindness unto my master. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that, behold, Rebekah came out 
who was born of Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. So basically she shows up on the scene before he even finished speaking the prayer with her uh, pitcher or vessel on her shoulder. And the, dam the damsel, the lady, young lady, was very fair to look upon. She was a virgin. Neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of your pitcher. And he said, and she said, drink, my Lord. And she hastened and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. Now, I'm going to stop at verse 18. No, I'm almost done. Let's keep going. 19. And when she had done giving him drinks, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have done drinking. And she hastened quickly and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again into the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. And the man, wandering at her, held his peace to witness whether the Lord had made his journeys, journey prosperous or not. Okay, so we're going to stop there. Ha, 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 ha. Woo. Yes. So I was like, okay, am I going to really read all of this or not? But I did because I wanted you to see what the words said. All right. Now, uh, let me get back to my notes here. Okay. All right. So, all right. Instructions from Abraham to his servant were very clear. We went through that. Now, Abraham said to his servant, the same God that told me this promise is the same God that will send his, send his angel before you. Now, when he gets to this place to, um, the, to, the, to follow through on the instructions that was given him, he began to pray and ask God to bless him. And he, this is the part that I want to try to get through before we close on today. His prayer. His prayer blew my mind because the word said that Abraham said, I'm going to pray that my angel will accompany you, that he will lead you. But Eleazar, the servant, what he did was by faith make a request. I don't see in the instructions that was given to him from Abraham to make that kind of request. But he wanted to honor the oath that he made. Come on to follow and carry out these instructions with obedience. And he did not want to return empty handed. Come on. So he prayed a prayer of faith that was very detailed. And before he could finish his prayer, huh, the word said before he was done speaking, Rebecca was already on the way. He asked, send someone that when they will fill their water up, if I ask for a drink, that not only would they give me a drink, but then go on and feed my camp, drink, um, give a drink to my camels too. She comes and she now follows through and becomes a part of his answer prayer. All right. Now, here's the thing I want y'all to understand. He prays this powerful prayer. She's already coming as a part of his answer before he finishes this prayer. But the thing is now this is another assignment that's taking place in the middle of his assignment. Two assignments happening at the same time. One assignment is, excuse me, the second assignment is the answer to the first, the answer to the first assignment. Rebecca is coming to draw water from the well. Ooh, but that was a part of her everyday routine and her everyday routine started from a place of assignment. <laughs> it was her assignment to go to the well to get water and take it back to her household, to her family, to her mother, her father and her brothers so they could have the, 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 the water they needed daily for drinking, cooking, cleaning, washing, whatever. That was her assignment. And every day she carried out with obedience her assignment. And in her assignment, she became the answer to the servant in his prayer and his assignment. Ooh, Holy Spirit, have your way. My God. 
Sometimes we get so caught up in our day-to-day -day routines that we lose track of the original assignment. We're so, here's some examples. We were so excited when we got that new job, but years later we start complaining and we're immediately looking for a way out of the situation. But what about the assignment? Come on now. Um, here's another example. Uh, we were so excited um, about the engagement and even more excited about the wedding. And we were looking forward to spending the rest of our lives together. But wait a minute. You just said yes to an assignment. And when things started getting difficult, you forgot your original, come on, position and posture when you said yes before God had made a covenant. Woo, you just got attached to your assignment. Assignment? Yes. But some of you get into this position, you forget, you lose sight of what your original position was and it just becomes a day-to-day -day routine and you just start saying, I didn't sign up for this. Or did you? Some of us go on and say, "Is did I really say yes to this? Did I say I do to this? <laughs> Come on. Um, you have to be careful now uh, because we can get into the place where we water down um, the, the call on our lives to a mundane routine. Oh, God, Jesus. We can allow our assignment to become stale in our day to day and it water downs the assignment to just a mere routine. So much so to the point that we lose track of our capacity. Our capacity to carry out the assignment on our lives. Now, I want to take the moment to connect that capacity to the training ground of our hearts. Because remember that I said the assignment is not the test. The assignment comes prior to the test. The assignment comes to test whether or not, excuse me, I don't want to use that word test. The assignment is designed as an actionable opportunity for you to carry out the instructions so that the heart can be trained to have the capacity to carry that assignment out to the end, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it sounds like, no matter what it feels like. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Ooh, I'm being reminded of, of, of Timothy. I can't think of the scripture right now, but there's a, a scripture in, 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 in Timothy. I think it's first Timothy. I'm not sure. But it says be be uh, um, in season and out of season. What was it? You got to be fruitful in season and out of season, in season and out of season. I don't like, wait a minute. I understand being fruitful in season, but how can you be fruitful out of season? If it's out of season, let me get it right. I want to sit here and quote it wrong. Pull it on up. Uh, help me hold the spirit. Sounds good, but I want to get it right. Give me a chance to wipe the sweat. All right. Second Timothy chapter four, second Timothy chapter four. And it's verse two. <clears throat> but I'm going to read um, verse one in Okay, um, I charge ye therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, that you must preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Woo, come on. Preach the word whether you feel like it or not. Preach the word, my God, no matter whether or not the season is fruitful for you. My goodness. Reprove. Rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Come on. So I was thinking, it just came back to my mind as I was reading this. And I'm going to say that for next week because there's a lot more there. But there are moments where God has given you, thank you, Holy Spirit, for connecting it together. There are moments when God has given you a word and by faith, you acted on that word, kind of like the servant. By faith, he had the faith to pray and ask God to do this thing. And he was wondering ahead of time, what if this woman won't come back with me? But instead, because he wanted to be obedient to the assignment, 
He was put in a situation whether he knew it was going to be instant in season or out, whether or not she was going to say yes or no. But regardless of the situation, he was going to be obedient to the assignment and get it done. Ooh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So back to the capacity to carry. You have to understand that as God is developing the ground of your heart, he's also trying to expand you over time. I don't know if y'all can see this in the camera. As God is developing the ground of your heart, he's trying to expand you over time. He's trying to lengthen and enlarge. Ooh, come on. Your capacity. He's trying to enlarge his territory in you. So as he's working on the ground of your heart, my God, with his word, he's he's putting seed into the ground. Come on. Remember, we talked about seed time harvest seed over time that will help you grow into your harvest. So he's expanding your ability to hold his word. And sometimes that takes effort. And sometimes it happens over a period of time. And sometimes it doesn't seem like anything's happening because we can't see the beautiful thing that God is doing beneath the surface of the ground in this situation. But our hearts should have been trained by the word of God that that says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when we hear the word of God, our hearts should be trained to understand that even though we can't seize it in this season, does not mean it's not going to happen in the next season. And I know the word of God has been sown deep down in my heart and he's expanding my capacity. Oh God, to understand by faith. That I can still fulfill the assignment and on the other side in obedience, I will see harvest. Ooh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I'm going to put a note. Start here next time. And the Lord knew what he was doing because it's going into another um, section. So we're going to stop right here. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I just want to pray right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there's anyone here right now who, 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 who have felt a pulling and a tugging in their heart, that this moment was a training ground experience. Ooh. And as the word went forth, as the teaching went forth, God began to till at the ground of your heart. And, 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 and to dig up some things in the soil that just should not be there. And I invite you today that in that tilling of the ground, in the turning over of the soil, whoo, come on. God was turning over something in you to prepare your heart to receive him today. I pray that as the word was going forth, you felt the shift in your spirit. And what that was, God was enlarging his territory. Come on. He was expanding your capacity to receive salvation on today, to receive Jesus. When we opened up the service, I gave you a quick overview. What Jesus did for you on the cross, he died so that you can go from dead, unproductive ground to a place of harvest. He died so that the power and the penalty of sin would no longer have a hold on you. He died so that you today can begin to live and carry out the assignment he's had on your life all along. So today I want to invite you to receive salvation. And I want you to pray with me right now. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe and I receive you. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my heart and expanding and enlarging your territory in me. Forgive me for my sins. Heal me. Thank you, God, for raising me from the way I used to be. Woo, my God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for raising me from the outside and bringing me to the inside, taking me from that out of season situation into an in season situation every day with you. Father, you raised Jesus from the dead and, um, raised him to life, and he ascended into heaven. So today I can receive him as my Lord and Savior. And I ask that you fill me with your spirit and make me new. 
I am yours today, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you have prayed that prayer with me today and accepted Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, I want to congratulate you and let you know that you no longer are a slave to sin because he has destroyed the work of the sin in your flesh. And now you are a new creation in Christ Jesus with the capacity to be a, a living vessel ready to be used by him. And we're going to get into this next week because it's in the next section. You're a temple of the Holy Spirit. Your life is new. And now he is giving you a refresh. So as you begin to carry out the assignment, things are going to look different. You're going to look different. You're going to sound different. Woo, hallelujah. And don't let the enemy trick you just because you might not feel different. You are different because God is now within you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.